on Soyland. Uh, this video, what we're going to do is we're going to make a reproduction deforest spherical audion tube. Let's take a look at it in the book to see what we're going to do. Okay, this is a picture of a single wing uh, spherical audion. Uh, that's a double wing alongside of it there. We're going to make a single wing today. It's a little bit quicker and easier. Okay, the, the, the bulb is spherical. It's about 1.8 to 2 inches in diameter. I've seen them anywhere from 1.8 to as much as 2.2 inches in diameter. Uh, most of them were right at around 2 inches, 1.9 to 2 inches. Okay, we have a, a lamp base. This is candelabra lamp base on the bottom. And um, it's a double-ended tube, meaning that um, yeah, we have elements going in through the bottom and we have elements going in through the top. So we have to have two sets of seals on it. Now, to show you what it's really like, okay, this is a real spherical, spherical audion tube. This is a, an original DeForest spherical audion tube. Uh, picked it up on eBay for $900. Um, it is burned out. It's a single wing tube. And when we get through, we're going to have one that looks just like this. To start off with, we're going to use a piece of one inch tubing, standard wall Pyrex tubing. Um, we're going to put our rotary joint in it because we have to make pressure inside the tube to blow the envelope. So we're going to put our rotary joint. This allows us to have a hose hooked onto the tube while the tube rotates. the envelope, we're going to go ahead and use the large torch tip. First thing we do is we do what's known as pulling a point. All that does is close us off the end of the tube. That's our point. Now we use a combination of heat and pressure and we're going to round the end off and get the body wall to where it's exactly even. That way the, the envelope will blow perfectly. Next we're going to blow the envelope. We're going to make it about two inches long. The, the envelope is going to be two inches in diameter, so we're going to make about two inches of uh, glass um, hot, and then we'll put pressure on it through the pressure tube, and that'll blow the envelope. We'll heat the glass up until it's about like peanut butter. We don't want it too soft, or the envelope will um, not be round. It won't be spherical. If the glass is very stiff, like peanut butter, then it'll form a spherical, perfect spherical shape. And that's our envelope. Next, we need the stem. This one is 3 8 in diameter to fit into the, um, into the candelabra socket. So we're going to take that and we're going to seal it onto the end of the tube, the end of the envelope. Okay, we now have the, uh, the, the stem centered in the lathe. I'm going to take the small torch and I'm going to blow a hole in the end of the envelope. carbon tool to go ahead and clean it up. Okay, now we're going to seal that onto our evacuation step. 
I'm going to put a little bit of a flare. on the end of the evacuation stem so that it'll seal better. If we have a little bit of a flare on it, it won't tend to close up as much. By holding it in the lathe, we can just uh, warm the two pieces up and then shove it together. Okay, they're now contacting and I'm going to back off a little bit. Now I'm going to put Heat it up and put pressure on the inside to even out the glass. Diameter of this, uh, the stem on this end is a little large for the flare we're going to use. So what we're going to do is we're going to stretch it and we're going to reduce that diameter a little bit so that it'll be more in keeping with uh, what size of flare we're going to use. To do that, we just use a large torch. I'm going to heat it up and I'm going to just take the chuck and move it apart and that'll draw it down. Because it's Pyrex, we don't have to worry about the glass shattering. If we were using soft glass, we'd have to be very careful when we reheated this um, bowl to keep it from cracking. Okay, now I've got it soft, and I'm just going to back off with the chuck and draw it down. Okay, I'm going to use the carbon tool. Up here where it's a little bit tapered, I'm going to just push it in with the carbon tool and make it to where it's a uh, cylindrical shape. Okay. We're going to puff it out just a little bit, and it's perfect. Now, we'll go ahead and let that dry. Uh, um, dry. We'll let that cool, and then we'll cut it off, and that'll be our envelope. To cut the tube off, we use a diamond saw. Now, what we have is a motor, and we have a diamond saw blade. This is a lapidary saw blade. It's four inches in diameter and has a diamond grit on the edge. Um, you get these on eBay's. Um, this, this particular one is about six thousandths of an inch thick. You can get them anything from about four thousandths up to oh, 15, 20. I mean, they, they get some pretty thick ones, but you want a thin one uh, to cut the glass. It, it's much quicker. All we do is we get the thing turning. Use a little WD-40 to go ahead and lubricate it, and we just touch it to the glass. Cuts right through. And that's our envelope. All right, to make our elements, um, okay, this is what the base is going to look like. We have our flare. We're going to have a wire for supporting the plate, a wire for supporting the plate, and one plate wire has to come out through the bottom. So we'll have a feed through on it. And then we'll have a, a feed through going through for the grid, and the grid wire has to be long enough to make the actual grid. We're not going to put a joint between the actual uh, zigzag and the feed through into the glass. We're just going to use the same piece of wire. So we're going to make the grid wire very long and the two plate wires shorter and then we'll put a, a feed through on each. Now to make the feed throughs we use uh, 20 mil um, uh, copper wire. I'm going to make them about uh, two inches long. I'm going to make two of them. Okay. For the grid I'm going to use a piece of uh, 30 mil nickel and I'm going to make it uh, long enough to make the grid. It needs to be about five zigzags. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, and then a little extra. Okay, we'll make it about so long. It's, it's maybe uh, four or five inches long. Not critical. We'll cut off whatever we don't need. For the plate support, we're going to use um, 20 mil nickel, and we need uh, two pieces. These, once again, are not critical length. I'll make them about an inch and a half long.
Now, these pieces of wire are round, so if you put them in the glass, uh, the, the glass doesn't really stick to them, so they will tend to rotate. So to stop them from rotating, we're going to use these pliers, and we're just going to crimp the bottom a little bit. That puts a little flat spot on there. Now the glass goes around that flat spot, and not only does that keep the wires from pulling out, but it also keeps them from rotating. That makes sure that our elements don't uh, vibrate around in the tube uh, after it's completely finished. Okay, just a little flat spot. Okay, and then our grid wire. little flat spot. Okay, next we have to uh, put our tungsten wire on for the steel. For this we use, uh, this is 16 mil tungsten wire. It's been polished and, and straightened. Um, we're going to go ahead and um, weld that onto our grid wire and our one of our plate wires. We, we need our two feed throughs. Now we'll just use a small pliers here. I'm going to break it off to about um, a quarter inch long, maybe a little less, about three sixteenths long. Okay, this one delaminated, so I'm going to break that tip off of it. This wire is treacherous in it. It can have laminations, and laminations uh, can cause a, a leak because a lamination is where the tungsten wire is not homogeneous. There's an actual longitudinal crack in the wire. And that, that air can get into that crack and, and feed through the, uh, through the seal. That, that's a disaster if that happens. Okay, we'll make one more for plates, feed through. Okay, that takes care of our plate and our grid. Now we're going to put our feed through wires on it. We're going to use our 20 mil wire and to weld it onto tungsten. Um, we cannot weld copper straight to tungsten. We have to use a braze, and we use nickel for our brazing material. Nickel is a universal metal that welds to virtually anything, and it, it sticks to tungsten, sticks to copper, and has a very high electrical resistance, so it's easy to heat with the uh, pincher welder. I'm just going to put about a sixteenth of an inch long piece of copper, uh, um, not copper, but uh, nickel sleeving over this copper wire just right in the area where the weld is. I'm going to cut this off with a diamond saw. So we just have a, about a sixteenth or even less than a sixteenth of an inch of nickel sleeving over the piece of wire. I'll open the end up again with a little scribe and do our second wire. Now, to keep these pieces of uh, sleeving from falling off the ends while we're working on them, I'm just going to crimp them on there a little bit with the pliers like we did the other. Just flatten them out a little bit to keep them squished onto the copper. Just a little bit. It doesn't take a lot. Okay. That one's a little long. You just need a little bit, so I'm going to cut it off a little bit. About a sixteenth of an inch. Okay, we'll weld one onto the grid. Now for this we use full power on the welder, the full 90 amps, because we want that nickel to turn into molten nickel and just, just uh, flow onto that tungsten. A very hot flame there. Now I'm going to use the squishers and I'm just going to take and squish that down and make that weld nice and round. We don't want any little particles of metal sticking out that would stick through the glass and um, cause a leak. Okay, and that's our electrode. So what we have, we have the, the piece of wire that we're going to make the grid, we have the little piece of tungsten in the middle for the seal, and then we have the copper which is used for our uh, connection on the bottom of the tube.